What's so special about making comic books? I think it's the fact that I can tell a story and it gives me the chance to show my visuals, my mind, and to have other people see what goes on. And it's really a f huge form of self-expression, especially since I'm writing my own comics too. There's one way of um, just illustrating something and showing that off. And it's skill, but when it comes to being able to write my story, create my characters, and do everything for myself, it is a true art form for me. And it's expressing in every way I can. And that's why it's really important, at least to me. The tree houses are a huge thing in my comic book of Dreams and Nightmares because it kind of stems back to where the whole comic book came from. Puppet came to me in a dream, and in Puppet's realm, one of the more prominent features was a giant treehouse. The treehouse was where he lived, and why this is so special is because when I was in that realm, it kind of felt like a safe place. It felt like childhood. It felt like everything that I could want in a place. It was what my dreamland was considered to be and so the tree houses are kind of connection to childhood and youth and an escape and kind of just fantasy that we want to live in the dream machine came about when i was in a phase of looking at steampunk and different mechanics around that and i was also looking at the creation of the first computer in this other comic book and I was wondering, how can I add this into my comic book and make it make sense? You can put in a whole bunch of mystical machines and they can be weird and wonderful, but I want them to make sense. But I don't want them to make too much sense. Because then I feel like that loses the magic of the comic book. So the dream machine plays a huge role on giving that fantasy feel in the comic book, but also making it kind of realistic enough and to make this story feel believable in some sense. I quite literally took this from something I've always had. Again, Puppet came from my dream. Making stories is something I've always been into, and it's something I always wanted to do. So I just took Puppet from my dream. I already had Stork, who is the second protagonist in my book, and um, put them together into a whole story. There has been many artists I've been looking into, and. Not all of them are comic book artists. For comic makers, I've been looking into Ethan Baird Skyver, Alan Moore, and Junji Ito. Each for their own reasons. Ethan is because he's a more independently published artist. He has a lot of detail work in his comics that I wish I could have. Alan Moore is more for his story writing, making really deep plots with hidden meanings in it like in The Watchmen. Um, I watched a few reviews on that to make me appreciate him much more. So, he's been inspiring me through that. And also making really good, deep, and interesting characters. And uh, Junji Ito, um, they're very famous for uh, horror comics. And I personally love the style, specifically. Because it creates a reaction just by looking at it. In the process of actually making the comic book, I took a style that I never really worked with right off the bat, and that was hatching and using a brush pen. This was suggested by my art teacher, and honestly, at the beginning, I was secretly opposed to it because I wasn't good enough at it, and I'm that kind of person is that um, if I'm not good at it right off the bat, I don't like it. I will not like it. I'll be frustrated with it. But I learned to continue with it, and as I carried on, it became something I was used to, and I inhabited into my regular style nowadays. When I started off, though, I started looking into um, 
Brian Shelsnick and in his book The Invention of Hugo because he's a very famous hatch artist and then there was a whole bunch of um smaller artists that I've been looking into don't really got the names of them they're just really good and it's skilled with pencil so and I would also try different materials um, I would go from high quality inks and the finest brush pens to charcoal and sharpies whatever really works to fit the image I wasn't too picky about it There are always places that an artist can improve, and even if the viewers see what they consider a perfect piece, an artist will always see the flaws in it anyway. My style will always change and improve, and this is something that I find lovely in Dreams and Nightmares, because you can actually see the growth in Chapter 1 alone, and it will only make pro progress as I go. As I go, I kind of want to get more fluid, kind of get more detail into there, and I've already been working on it in Chapter 1. It's in it's in the scenery. If you go and look, there's not much scenery in chapter one. But as we go on into chapter two or like some of these little bits that I made, I put more detail into the surroundings. This piece became a more personal piece once I realized what I wanted out of myself. And what I mean by that is to have to realize where my goals are in life, to realize what I want to do, to realize where I want to go. And what I wanted to do with myself. What kind of comic artist do I want to be? What kind of message do I want to put out there? What do I want to be known for for being an artist? And yeah, that's pretty much it. I want to make my stuff enjoyable but also personal to me. Because th like in this piece, Dreams and Nightmares, is quite literally coming from myself. These characters are from a dream. It's created worlds I've made. And I want, and I know that they are important to me because it also holds a lot of my beliefs on what dreams mean, and my morals within the characters, different things like that. But I need it to be enjoyable for somebody else, in my opinion. I want other people to enjoy what I do, as well as for me to enjoy what I do.